sorry I haven't been on for a couple of weeks. Um, as you know, I was sort of progressing through what I called cycle four from using the monitor, the clear blue monitor on TT seeing baby number six. Um, but really it was cycle three in a way, because as you know, when I started using it on my second cycle, I had a mid cycle bleed, but I started it all from the beginning again. So although it was counted as cycle four on my monitor it was really only cycle three however I got to day 27 yesterday didn't feel very symptomatic of any pregnancy if I'm being honest I tested with a cheapy on 11 DPO a pound shot one that I had and it was blank as which I wasn't surprised at all um, and I also tested with my monitor and that was not pregnant and then the monitor advises that you don't test till the day your period's due because their um, pregnancy tests aren't as sensitive as like the ones you buy, like the early response or the first response ones. So they do say test the day your period's due. So I was completely ignoring that when I tested at 11 DPO. I also used a stick on 12 DPO because I thought, well, I've got quite a few of those pregnancy tests because I didn't bother testing last cycle. I just did not feel like I wanted to test at all. Sometimes I get like that. The anxiety and the scared feeling outweighs the benefits of testing early for me sometimes. I think because I've suffered a chemical, possibly two chemicals, because um, about a year and a half ago, I had a positive test at 11 DPO, a faint line, and then the next day there was nothing on a stick, and then the next day there was nothing. So although I only had one faint positive, we still to this day don't know whether it was a chemical or whether it was a faulty Wilco's pregnancy test. There was a lot of people saying the Wilco's tests were crap with the purple handle, you get two for like 199. So to this day, I don't know whether that was a chemical pregnancy I suffered or a faulty pregnancy test. But as you know, testing early can create so much anxiety, although it's exciting and we all wanna know early. Some of you might be like me, waiting to start progesterone ASAP, so you need to know straight away if you've got a BFP so that you can start that. That's why I test early, that's my thing at the moment I want to sort of get that BFP so I can get the progesterone ready just in case that is why I miscarry but at the same time testing before 12 DPO I think can give you such false hope normally 12 DPO onwards is pretty much a categoric yes because you implant between 6 DPO and 12 but the optimum time is 9 that's when they say that's the most popular time of implantation and it takes about 24 to 48 hours to produce the HCG normally 48 hours to produce it that it will show in a urine test so that's why blood tests are more effective so if you implant at 9 DPO a blood test can pick it up within 24 hours but a urine test normally takes 48 hours so testing at 12 DPO if you get a very faint positive that's usually quite you know keep your fingers crossed it should be okay but when I tested like at 10 DPO and got that faint positive it was when I miscarried and when I got an 11 DPO it was a chemical or a faulty test then when I tested again that time and got a faint positive at 10 DPO I miscarried again so I do get anxious when it's testing time so sometimes I just don't bother testing I just wait it out and sometimes I start testing and this time round I tested like I said 10 uh, 11 DPO on a cheapy pound short one got a blank monitor was blank 12 DPO monitor was blank so I decided to just wait now because I ovulated early this time and we know the luteal phase well I thought it was 12 to 16 days but I've looked up luteal phase is 11 to 17 days but I always wait um, I never ever test 7 or 8 DPO, I don't think I've ever tested that early. I might have back on my old videos, I can't remember. I sort of get to 9 DPO and think, shall I, shan't I? But anyway, negative test. So I waited, when I got to 13 DPO I thought I'm not going to test again. Um, I'll just sit it out and I got to yesterday 14 DPO and I didn't have any symptoms other than creamy CM and feeling very periody, and this is where it can really cheat you, your body, because although I'm in tune with my body, and I can tell when I'm ovulating, because again, I got a blazing positive OPK on a cheap strip, it corresponded beautifully with my peak on the monitor, 
I felt niggly, like a little pinchy sort of niggle on my left hand side. So I thought, you know what? I think I'm going to ovulate soon. That was like on day 11, day 12, it felt stronger. I got my first peak. Later on, on day 12, I had like shooting pains up my bottom and sort of really ovulation pain. It wasn't excruciating on a nine or a 10 or 11. It was probably on a seven or an eight, but I knew I was ovulating. So I think I ovulated later in the day on day 12, which was the 30th of March. And I got my peak on the monitor, the 30th and 31st of March. We did the deed the 29th of March and the 30th of March. So I hit a high and one peak. I didn't want to do any more. I had a stinking cold. That was why I didn't get on here actually. I had like a temperature, not a sore throat, but I was snivelly snotty with a temperature. I was really not feeling myself for about three or four days. So I wasn't that bothered about baby dancing, if I'm being honest. It's not great when you're TTC and it takes quite a lot of excitement out of it anyway, let alone if I was sneezing and snotting and blowing my nose. So we just literally hit those two days. And I did say to Aaron, I don't know that I'll be lucky this month because I'm not really up for it. And he was quite happy that we only did two days because he's been super busy at work. Um, yeah, so I had my Vashti's reading, as you know. I think I've done a vlog since then. She said, I can't see you pregnant now. I was like, oh, you're joking. But then it was only the 27th of March and I hadn't hit peak ovulation. So I was like, well, no, I'm not. I'm not even peak yet. And she said, I don't think you are this month, Ingrid. I think you need to get your vitamin D up, relax a lot more. The kids are back to school. You will feel more relaxed in yourself in the next month or two. I can see you falling in June. And then she worked out that it corresponded really nicely with a fire sign Aries. And she just said, I could just see you falling pregnant in June. She said, so start taking vitamin D, which will take, you know, two to three months to get working in your body. And with the kids back at school and you in a slightly better place, I think it'll happen then. Well, that's what your cards say. A fire sign baby, number six is happening 100%. I think it's happening on your cards in June. And every reading I've had, as you know from my vlogs, she said there's a baby number six waiting for me. It's definitely going to happen. She can see it being a fire sign. She can see it definitely happening and I'm pregnant around Christmas. So it all falls into place. I just thought maybe I was going to be heavily pregnant December time like I have been in the past with my other kids. Because um, I've carried, obviously through Christmas with a lot of them but I've also had Christmas babies um, three times so you know it's not unusual for me so I thought maybe that's why when she said you're gonna carry Christmas time I really thought she meant I'd have a baby beginning of December like my fifth baby was and that would be my fire sign but perhaps that's what she meant I'm just gonna be five or six months pregnant around Christmas very happy putting up my decorations and the baby's gonna be born March but she said to me um, she said your baby's going to be born before around the 21st of March. It's going to be an Aries and I can really see it happening, Ingrid. So I just think you've had these blips because of everything you've gone through with homeschooling. The coronavirus for everyone's been stressful, especially for you homeschooling five. Um, she said, I don't think it helped that you had the iron deficiency right at the beginning and the losses and the mole removed. She said, I just think you're in a good place now. She said, I know it feels a lifetime that you've been trying because I've been trying for two years, as you guys know. She said, but you are healthy. I can't see any medical things here other than you need to get your vitamin D up. And I said, that's a real annoying because I was on vitamin D, but I stopped it in November after the chemical pregnancy because I just didn't think. Um, I needed it, taking a pregnant care. But she said, to be honest, although pregnant care's got vitamin D in it, you might need just a little boost. And we do know vitamin D does help egg quality. So I'm back on that. I've gone for a vegan meridian oil that you just put from a pipette straight on your tongue, available on Amazon. It's eleven ninety nine for a little bottle, but that bottle should last you months and months and months. Fashti uses it, actually. And like I say, it's by a... Yeah, I think it's Viridian it's by not meridian viridian i think it is um and i've been taking that now since the 27th i literally ordered it straight off the phone from vashti's reading i asked her which one she used and which one would be quicker to get in my body and she recommended that and i literally got off the phone ordered it on amazon and i think it was there that night so i started taking it the 28th of march so since the 28th of march i have been properly on a pipette which is a thousand of vitamin d and i'm just going to take that quite happily until i get pregnant then i'll drop it to 50 and my pregnant care it does make me a bit cautious because they 
I haven't had a, a coronavirus jab yet. They're not concentrating on um, my age group yet. They're just not worried about it yet. Round our way, they were sort of doing the 50-year-old brackets and upwards. So everyone over the age of 50 now should have at least had their first injection or at least an appointment booked. Now they're concentrating on the 45s and upwards. And I think that is across Hampshire and West Sussex, which is where I am. So um, right now, People between the age bracket 45 and 50 will be getting their invitations. So I'm not in that bracket. So I won't be getting my coronavirus jab. So then that brings me on to Vashti's other thing. She said, I know everyone's been offering their vaccines at the moment. She said, I'm advising you not to go down that route yet. She said, I need, know you've got to get done and I want you to get done. And obviously everyone should get done. But I really think with you trying for a baby, it's a toxin you don't need in your body right now. Um because I'm actively trying, it's not like I'm going to say, right, well, we'll hold it for six months trying for a baby, I'll get my vaccines out of the way. Um, I'm properly in the midst of trying. As you know, Aaron's anxious to stop around September. He said he'd give me till the summer. He just doesn't want to carry on with the trying. He's had enough. I can't even get to that place at the moment, so I'm not even thinking about that. I'm just thinking, we're going to get pregnant. It's in my, in my future. It's in my destiny. Um, I'm not even thinking about we're not going to i'm just thinking it's definitely going to happen vashti sees it she sees it june if it doesn't happen june i will try july and august and i'll keep trying until aaron stops you know wanting to try i suppose but he, in his head he's sort of saying we'll give it till the summer and then that's that and my obviously my youngest starts school in september and i would have loved to have had a baby in my tummy when she starts school because it would just make me feel in a better place much more secure knowing that i've got a baby come in I know it sounds selfish, but that's how I feel. Um, so I was really hoping that I'll be at least a few months pregnant by the time she starts school. That's the plan. So yeah, I'm happily still trying, but today AF appeared this morning. That's why I'm giving you an update. I probably will give YouTube a rest just for a few weeks and get back on here in my two week wait, unless I feel like doing a vlog. So yeah, AF crept up on me, six o'clock this morning, I wiped and there was blood, so I've popped in a liner and I'm just waiting it out. I felt really heavy tummied. So like I said, yesterday at 14 DPO, which was day 20, it was actually day 27 of my cycle, I think, because um, I ovulated a bit earlier and they always time it on your monitor two weeks. I was 14 DPO yesterday, I had no symptoms other than CM, Felt very periody, but what I was saying earlier is I felt very periody when I was carrying my last baby. I remember doing a test on 13 DPO, getting my first faint positive at 13 DPO. It was a bit of a squinter. It took a long time to dry on a test, so I wasn't sure if it was an evap line. And then I was at work on the Wednesday, which was 14 DPO, the day my period was due, and I did another test with lunchtime wee, and it was a faint positive that you didn't need a light behind. So that's when I found out. But up until about 17 DPO, I felt very periody. I felt periody from like 12 DPO right to about 17 DPO with her. And that was like heavy tummy, like I was going to come on, backache. And I did vlog that right in my early videos saying, I feel really periody, but it's my second BFP. I hope I'm not going to have a chemical. And that's the danger. If you test the day before your period, you're normally home and dry the day of your period, but before that, you've got to say that sometimes, very occasionally, the egg and seed can meet, there's no effort to go, and you get a chemical pregnancy. It just can't implant. So it's not classed as a miscarriage or a loss, sadly, still, though. It is just classed as a chemical pregnancy. Some science has happened, and that's it. Because my gynaecologist was like, we don't really count chemicals as a loss, but because... Um, you've been trying for so long, you've had healthy pregnancies, you know your body, you've had two miscarriages within 18 months, I am going to give you the progesterone, but usually it's three losses before they let you have the progesterone. But um, she luckily for me did count my chemical as a loss, but usually on statistics when they're doing um, graphs and things to show losses for studies, they will not show chemicals as losses. They only do that over the phone verbally and on a one-to-one -one basis. I don't know why. I suppose it's still where they don't count like a late pregnancy as an actual live birth when a baby passes. I think that's all wrong. I hate it when they count it as a miscarriage when you're gone past. I just hate it. I think a miscarriage over the age of 12 weeks is not, I don't think that's a miscarriage. 
I think that is absolute just awful. That's another topic for another day anyway. <clears throat> I've had friends that have lost babies that, well, Kate lost hers at 13 weeks, lost a tube, had a horrendous C-section and was depressed for months and literally going through such a tough time and they classed it as a miscarriage and I just think it's terrible. I just think as soon as I pee on that stick and get a BFP, I'm having a baby. I've got a baby inside me, I'm excited. And not everyone sees it like that. But anyway, that's a topic for another day. I'm on day one of my cycle. Like I say, it's cycle four, but I've got to count it as cycle five on my Bloom and Clear Blue because of that mid-cycle bleed. So I've been using the monitor happily since January. And like I say, I set it up in January, got a BFN, set up in February and it ballsed up. So I had to start it all again. Started it again, so cycle three, which is beginning of March, cycle four, which was this one. Yes, yeah, so I think I'm on cycle five now. But anyway, it's day one of AF, bang on, on the door. Day 28 came on. So yes, I'm grateful to God I've got a healthy uterus, grateful to God I've got my regular periods, grateful for, to God that I can feel my ovulation, grateful to God I've got five beautiful babies and a lovely husband and a home and food in my belly. But pissed off I've come on my period anyway I've dropped the little girl off at nursery I've now got a couple of hours till my boys are back they've just gone for their haircut after lockdown with my husband who's taken a few hours off work my nine-year-old has got a dental appointment which my husband's got to take him quite far away it's an hour and a half away because they can't fit him into our private practice to have what he needs done so my husband's had to take a bit of time off work because the kids are still at home from school and I can't leave the children. I can leave my 13-year-old for like half an hour while I quickly nip to nursery or something like that. But I can't leave her longer than half an hour because she's only 13. So I've got to stay at home while he takes the nine-year-old to the dentist. But that's where I'm at. So vlog-wise, love you all. Friendship to all, love to all. Let me know where you are. Clear blue monitor, I love. I know where I am. I feel reassured with it. I'm happy with it. I've got nine fertility sticks left. I'm hoping I only need nine. It's already telling me to start testing on day six. I don't quite get that. When I look at my cycle review, I've had my cycles have all been 27 to 27 to 29 days. So they've all been damn on it. But when I first did it, it said start testing on day six. And the second time it said day eight. And now it's gone back to day six. So I don't know. But I'm hoping I peak fertility at like day 12, day 13. Day 12 today 15 is good for me that's what I'm happy with but yeah hopefully Aaron's on vitamin D as well on top of his um man vitamin you know the well man well man fertility he takes one of those a cod liver oil a vitamin C and some vitamin D every day but he does drink caffeine he has like three strong cups of coffee a day <clears throat> and he drinks at the weekend beer but he only drinks, like I say, he buys like 12 to 18 little bottles and he has them from Friday to Sunday and they are little bottles. So sometimes he might have 12 over a weekend. Sometimes he might have a few more. But when he sort of equates it up, like three of the little bottles make a pint of beer and he doesn't smoke and he doesn't go out with his mates and he doesn't really have hobbies other than taking our kids to football. So I'm not going to moan at him. You know, yes, he could shed a couple of pounds. I think that would make us trying a lot easier. But I'm not going to nag him. He's happy to have unprotected sex with me. He's happy for us to conceive our sixth baby. That is where Aaron's at. And I've got to be grateful for him for that, really. But I'm a bit bummed. But thank you for all your support. Love to Maggie, as always. Love you, darling. Thanks for all your help and support online. Thank you, Paige, for always messaging me and Abby and Jessica thank you and love to my other friends who are always at the end of a phone Kate and Joe and Rachel so love you all basically and keep in touch see you soon so day one for me on AF and I think it's it is cycle four on the monitor but it's classed as cycle five see you later Bye.